Which you guys got another video here for you. This is the Minix Neo Z100. Can this mini PC replace a desktop PC? That's what we're going to be taking a look at in today's video and answering all your questions. This comes with Windows 11 Pro here. And again, this is a fanless mini PC, which means it's completely silent. There is no working fans in here. The specs on this one are the Intel Order Lake quad core N100 processor up to 3.4 gigahertz, Intel UHD graphics, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200, upgradable to 32 gigabytes maximum. Also comes with a memory card slot storage, which is 512 gigabytes on this version. And again, that's an NVMe upgradable to four terabytes if you want to put that into the system. You can pause the screen and read more of those uh, stats. I'll go through these as we do the video. This is exactly what you can expect inside the box if you purchase one. You're going to get your user manual. This is going to tell you everything about your uh, mini PC. You're also going to get in here some screws. This is uh, for mounting on your VESA mount here. If you want to mount this to the back of a monitor or something like that, you can do. This also keeps the desktop nice and clear by using the VESA mount there. We also have inside the kit, we've got a couple of Wi Fi antennas. And this is for the Wi-Fi 6, uh, which is obviously uh, 802.11ax dual band, uh, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. And we also have Bluetooth 5.2 on here. We've got a HDMI cable in the kit as well, and also this multi-power uh, adapter here, which is going to allow you to change it depending on what country you're in. Um, pretty low uh, power draw on this particular mini PC, as you'd expect. Your typical power consumption on this is 10 to 12 watts. Also, under turbo, it will be 25 to 27 watts uh, for this particular unit, which is very good indeed. Because uh, this is a low power draw unit, this is going to be ideal for, you know, just your normal desktop PC, Plex, and things like that. We also have the mini PC here. I'll just quickly put this adapter on for the UK here, and we can take a look at the mini PC in more detail. Let's go ahead and get the mini PC here. This is really heavy. It's got a big, heavy aluminium heat sink on here. The whole mini PC is made of metal, so not full of plastic. This one pretty uh, heavy at 0 0.89 kg. The dimensions are 123 times 120 times 46 millimeters. Uh, the dimensions of the actual unit itself. Very well built, as you can see here. Uh, this is all metal here as well. So a pretty nice looking design. You've got your antennas here, which we'll take a look at a little bit later on. So let's go through some of the more uh, detailed parts of this. If you want to put the antennas on, they just screw on like so. And uh, you can just rotate these in a direction where you want the Wi-Fi to be the most strongest. But they do have quite a good wide coverage on these antennas. Looking on the actual unit itself, we have the power button on the right hand side. Next to that, you've got a little LED light. But next to that, you've got the audio input. This is your 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Also, the USB 3.2 Gen 2 USB ports on there as well. And we also have the USB Type-C data only port on there as well. And we also have the micro SD card or TF card uh, slot on there as well for your storage. If you want to add more storage that way or even get your photos off onto the PC, you can do by using that method. On the back, we do have those two antennas, which we've already covered. And moving on round to the other side, we have the HDMI 2.1 on here we have two of those there which are 4k supportive at 60 hertz which means you can have multi monitors on this one also that 2.5 gigabit ethernet port on there which is the rtl 8125bg and we also have the two usb ports on there these are two usb 2.0 ports and we have the dc 12 volt input there on this side we have a little reset button here and on the top we have that nice little red and blue with that also aluminium heat sink on here because this is fanless on the bottom we have the two areas where you can mount the vessel mount and also we have the four anti-slip rubber feet with screws to remove the bottom panel to gain access to inside the actual mini pc so let's go ahead and remove these and we can take a look in more detail of what's inside so let's remove the bottom cover here now this is a little bit stuck down and this is because there's a big thermal pad going right onto the center of the motherboard here to probably cool all of those uh, components down here. But that is a big heat sink on there as well. So let's take a look uh, inside here. There's no area to mount a SSD in here. 
But we do have the uh, SSD NVMe drive here, which can be upgraded to a four terabyte if you wanted to inside there. And we also have uh, the memory here, which on this version has 16 gigabytes. It is single channel here, and it is their own brand, uh, Minix uh, memory. And also the same for the drive as well. I will take that out and show you that in a second. But it is just one slot on here, which is a bit disappointed. I would have liked to have seen dual channel memory inside here, but there is only one channel. So that can go up to 32 uh, gigabytes of maximum memory on one single channel. And that is DDR4 3200 megahertz sodium memory on there. So in this version, we do have 16 gigabytes. There is the SSD NVMe. I'm going to remove that, and you can see the Wi-Fi card next to that as well. I'm going to remove this so you can actually see the drive itself. Now, like I've already mentioned, this is the 512 gigabyte version, and uh, this is the SSD NVMe drive inside here. It's the Minix uh, version of their own, so they've got their own branded uh, drive here. And again, I'll do some speed tests on this so you'll be able to see. But you can upgrade this to a... Uh, I think it's a four terabyte drive inside here, de depending on whatever brand you want to go for. This is the actual uh, BIOS screen. So I booted into the BIOS so you can see it. And uh, again, you can uh, have a look at the full BIOS screen here and go through and make some changes in here if you wish. We've got a uh, CPU configuration, SATA configuration, power settings and hardware monitoring. These are never the most exciting uh, BIOS screens in the world uh, for a MIDI PC. They're pretty bare essential just to get the actual system running. But you can see here, you've got your USB wake up LAN and all that sort of stuff here in the advanced settings. Nothing much too exciting there. Also moving on to uh, the actual hardware here, I'll just quickly show you here for the hardware uh, settings. And also we can go into the chipset here. And this is where you can make some changes here. Now there is one setting in here, which I will change, which is that C state. Uh, and we can change that to get a little bit more performance out of this uh, little mini PC. So if you look inside here, enable or disable CPU power management allows CPU to go to C state when it is not 100% utilized. So we're just going to enable that feature there. And again, you can uh, also go into secure boot and there's a bunch of options inside here. Let's do a 4K uh, streaming test here on YouTube. And we're going to go ahead and put stats for nerds here and I'll set this to 4K and we'll see whether that streams down OK for this particular mini PC. Now you're going to get a few drop uh, frames here, but it shouldn't uh, affect the actual playback. As you can see, pretty smooth playback for this uh, budget sort of mini PC, I would say, because it comes in at around about 259 uh, US dollars, which is pretty cheap for a mini PC of this quality. And again, you can see it's playing this video no problem at all. Let me just do a quick skip here to see if it takes a while to catch up. And it does it pretty instantly. As you can see, with the performance on this is pretty nice. So if you're looking for an ultra quiet mini PC that just surfs the web, does a bit of office work, and also streams some content down, then something like this is going to be ideal. You've got your read and write speeds here, 2032. Uh, for reads and also for writes 1582 for writes so not too bad for a budget uh, mini pc now again it depends on what you want a mini pc for but we're just going to run this jellyfish 400 mbps 4k ultra hd hevc and 10-bit file here to see whether it can play it and this is going to be great for plex and things like that so if you want to run your plex movies on here or tv shows or whatever it is you want to do you can do that right here and you can see it's really instant when you skip the actual video here. There's no problem playing this silky smooth playback as you would expect from a mini PC like this. And at that price point, that is pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and run uh, Geekbench here, Geekbench 6, and we'll run the CPU here. I just want to quickly show you here because you'll get no thermal throttling on this little mini PC whatsoever. And uh, that is also stated on their website. But if you have a look here, I did run some extensive testing and I got no thermal throttling. Single core score was 1,066. Multi-core score was 2,016. And that's not too bad for a budget mini PC of this caliber. And remember, this is just the Intel uh, N100 uh, processor with six megabytes of cache. I think it has four cores and four threads on this particular uh, CPU. So I'm going to run a GPU uh, test here as well. Now, I'm not expecting this to break any records. 
uh, because we are using onboard graphics here. But you can see here, open CL score is 3,240 uh, for this particular model. Now I've plugged in a drive to do some game testing here just to see whether it can play some retro games here. So I've plugged in a, a hard drive with uh, some retro games pre-installed, plugged in my actual uh, controller and also my capture card here. And we'll play this. And uh, this is something that you can purchase online on AliExpress. And uh, you can just purchase these and they come pre-packed with loads of games on them. And you'll be able to just play all your favorite games that you used to play when you was a child. So I'm going to go ahead and do some testing here. I'm not going to push it too hard because it is a pretty low end system. But again, it will play some basic games like these, no problem whatsoever. It'll play Windows uh, Store games as well on the Windows Store. So is this mini PC right for you and can it replace your desktop PC? In some cases, mini PCs can replace a big tower desktop PC. It may even be preferred because of its small size and its fanless design. If you're one of these people that checks a few emails and goes on YouTube and streams some content, maybe watch 4K movies, and maybe you're doing a bit of office work and stuff like that, some light use, then a mini PC like this is going to be perfectly fine. If you are a high-end gamer, AAA listed gamer, and you want to do a 4K video rendering and things like that, then obviously no, this PC will not replace your uh, desktop PC. So it just depends on your circumstances. But if you want to set this up as a Plex server or maybe some sort of file sharing server or something like that, you'll be ideal to do something like that. I've made videos on that. Check all my video playlists. You'll be able to see plenty of content about that sort of topic. But all in all, I do think it's a pretty nice little mini PC. If you're looking for a silent mini PC, maybe you're living in a camper van or something like that and you don't have the space, then something like this is going to be ideal. Or maybe you've got some sort of a holiday uh, resort retreat where you don't want to sort of uh, spend vast amounts of money, then something like this will be ideal. Or you are not a heavy user of a computer, you can use something like this to uh, replace your big, massive desktop PC. And maybe you want to just downscale or downsize, then something like this is going to be ideal for you. Now, it's not the most powerful mini PC out there on the market, but at the price, the performance, it's not too bad. Uh, the cost of this is pretty affordable and in the reach of a lot of people, whereas some people complain about some of the pricing for some of these higher end mini PCs. This one is pitched at a pretty reasonable price at 259 US dollars, which isn't too bad for a mini PC. Again, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a passive cooling uh, mini PC for a home theatre system, then something like this is going to be ideal. Anyway, I think that is going to be about it. I'll leave all the information and links in the video description if you're interested. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.